episode of Using Creo. We are going to start with the new product put out by PTC, and we're going to start with Creo Elements Direct Modeling Express. Now, one of the first things that anybody wants to do with a CAD interface is change it so that it looks better on their screen or something that they're more comfortable with. I myself uh, originally am a SolidWorks boy, so having this look, um, I, I'm not used to it and I'd like things to change up a little bit. So let's just get right at it and, and start with it. First of all, the background being white is really hard on the eyes. So let's change that up. To do that, you go to File, Settings, and you go to Viewport. And once you're in here, um, you can have take a look at all this stuff. We're going to come back to a couple of these, but the big one that we're going to do for right now is the background. Now you can do a three color background, or if you don't like the three color, turn it to two color, whatever you want. Some of the defaults they have are pretty good, and I happen to like this one, so we're just going to use that. Now let's take a look at what the parts look like once you build them up inside the interface here. So we'll just do a rectangle, we'll do a quick pull, and get the shape up there and we'll say okay. Now you'll notice a couple of things. You have the part is sort of a steel gray and the edge lines here are a green. So, and the other thing is, is that you'll notice that when I rotate the part, the edges disappear and then when I stop rotating, they come back. Now that's a couple of things that I find kind of annoying. Now you might want to leave these edges green and I'll show you why here in just a moment. So how about we first tackle how to get rid of the lines disappearing when you rotate. First of all, you go into settings again, you want to go to viewport, and this time you want to go into dynamic viewing. And you want, currently, as it has, is suppress model edges when it's rotating or dynamically being viewed. Let's go to that and say use the show properties, and we'll close that off. Now what you'll notice is, is you notice this green line here is when I rotate it stays there so that that's an advantage I find it less distracting when I have that now some of the stuff that we're going to be doing here is going to require us to know what work plane we're on and which active part is which and you may or may not have the part browser on the side now granted it's not a history modeler it's not a parametric modeler but at the same time you still got to know what the parts are and what the assemblies are so to bring that up, what you want to do is you want to hit the View tab, go to Toolbars, and the Browser Bar. Now you can also notice that there is a Quick Tool keyboard shortcut for F12, which will bring this up. Now there's a couple ways you can have this. Some people don't want it eating up all the territory in here, so if you hit this pin, it'll disappear until you mouse over it, and at that point you have access to everything. I kind of prefer to be able to just quickly glance off to the side and see what's active. And right within this is if you want to make another part that's active is that you can right click on it and you can have set as active and at that point you'll be able to activate the part to make it the active one that's being edited. Now as originally being a SolidWorks boy I like to have my edges on parts black. Now there are two different sets of edges. Now you got to keep in mind that this isn't a parametric modeler it's a direct modeler. Therefore, you don't really have a history tree, but you do have a parts and assembly tree. Now, when you start working in this stuff, it's hard to figure out what part is the active part. And you can see down here, it will tell you what the active part is. But if you have a pile of parts in here and they have ambiguous names like P1, you're not really going to know what part you're working on. So generally, you want the line edges of and possibly the color of the part that you're working on to be unique compared to the rest of the model. So... Um, either A, leave it as the default, or B, we can change it. Now, for this all to work, we also have to create a new part. And there's a couple of different things that you can do to create a part. But I prefer to use this because it keeps everything unique. If I just start sketching down here, it will become part 1.1. And here, I'll show you exactly what I mean. I'm going to just uh, delete out some of these sketch elements. And this is one thing that I think is really nice, is that you come up here, you go to delete 2D and it knows that you're looking for 2D objects and if there isn't one immediately visible is there one behind the object that you're above and there is there's a line so it allows you to scrub those away without having to rotate the part it's kind of a nice little feature so let's create another rectangle or another cube so when we do that and we do pull we'll say okay you'll notice that it's part 1.1 and 1.1 adopts the visual properties of one from what I've seen so far. Now I could be wrong but 
everything I've done so far has kind of led me to believe that. So the next thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to delete all the 2D and you can use a box select to select to delete 2D as well. And we'll also get rid of this box. The way I like to deal with things is to create a new part. We're going to call it P2. This way I can rename it no problem. So we got part P2. And let's create some unique geometry that uh, we can see. We'll create a spline, we'll close it up, we'll go like that, and then we'll add a rectangle just to make sure that we've got some nice sharp edges to uh, observe when we uh, start taking a look at the different edge properties that we can put in on this. Okay, so now you'll notice something. The active part currently is part two, and the edges are green. The inactive part here is has edges that are, are gray or the same color as the part color. So how are we going to change this? So we, in this sense, we can see that this is the active part. Even though it's subtle, it's enough for you to be keyed off at. However, I want to change that to something that's sort of in your face. So I'd probably change that to a yellow. That way I know exactly what part, without a question, just at a glance at what part is active. So let's go in and start changing some colors around here. Go into settings, hit the 3D object, and we're going to deal with part appearance. Part base color is still gray is fine. Part edge color, let's make that black. Okay. Now you'll notice that sometimes, and I'm not sure exactly why, but the old parts don't necessarily get grandfathered in on this black edge, but that, that's okay. And then the current part color. The current part color, this is the green edge that you're seeing. So let's turn that into a bright yellow. And you can see that, boom, that changed right away. So we've got that. Now it's really apparent what part is active and what part is inactive. Problem with this is, is that did those black lines really come into play here? Well, let's just create a part three. Let's make a rectangle. Now, this is one thing I'm not sure how to do quite yet, and I'm new at this Creo thing, as I'm sure most of you are. And if you have a solution for me, please share it. But the only way, when you have a sketch on a plane, and you try to do an extrude, even if you're in a separate part, that sketch is not owned by this. So because it is not owned by this part, you end up having two pieces coming up extruded. Um, well, here, let me demonstrate. Here's that sketch that's there. Let's create a rectangle. And let's just do a quick pull. And you'll notice as I pull, it's creating geometry based off of those two sketches. So let's go back to Control Z a couple of times here. Let's delete this 2D geometry that we don't want. So we just want to have a separate part based off of a different sketch. So let's do this guy here. And we're going to do a pull. And that will be good. So now you can see that that's the active part. And this part here doesn't necessarily have a black edge. Now, why that is, I'm not exactly sure, but you can come in here and let's change the second part to the active part. So, let's go to set active. And as soon as I've set that active, you can see that those edges are black, just the way I wanted them. Now, like I said, some of the parts don't necessarily get grandfathered into the old color scheme, but in the meantime, this has gotten me to a stage where I start feeling more comfortable. I've got these black edges that I'm used to seeing. I got a background that doesn't blow my eyeballs out. And the lines don't disappear when I rotate. So that's it for today. That is just you know a starter. We're going to start going through this and learn how to use this stuff and become experts as the software is being rolled out. And seeing as this is the first revision of Creo Elements Direct Modeling Express, you're going to be one of the first kids on the block, and that can become a very powerful thing in the workplace and looking for jobs. So until next video, hope you have a good week, and we'll talk to you later.